Coming up, another special edition of How We Built It, I'm joined by Netherlands-based AI and analytics firm Macaw, who help their customers move off legacy systems to build intelligent operational processes. Now we're going to look at how they're helping to modernize the residential and commercial water supply in Holland with IoT and proactive analytics using Azure Synapse. So today I'm joined by data and analytics architect Henko Kors, dialing in from Macaw, working at home in Holland. Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Hey, nice to be here. So thank you so much for joining us today. And by the way, if you're new to Azure Synapse, this provides a unified environment for enterprise data warehousing and also big data processing come together into a single service, removing the traditional constraints for analyzing data really of all shapes and sizes. Now, Hanko, your team at Macaw really specializes in modernizing data platforms for your customers. And you've got a very specific scenario that you've been working on for your evaluation of Azure Synapse, where you're basically building analytics uh, on top of pretty closed legacy systems. Can you tell us more about that? Absolutely. So one of the first considerations for any data platform modernization effort is how the proposed solution can integrate with existing technology. The first checkbox for us was the openness of the platform so we can make sure that everything works. And that's one of the great things about Azure Synapse. It has a robust hub and spoke model that really allows you to bring in data from really all sources and use that against what you already have where that makes sense. That's right. But often you might be dealing with black box systems where you need to focus on getting the data out so you can build the processes and analytics platform around it. So I'll give you a real world example of our Synapse evaluation. In this case, a water utility company serving just under a million households who had no real way of detecting issues in the water service. And this is even more important because they are regulated to measure the cost of drinking water and the quality of service. Okay, so can you tell us where they're coming from? What are their current systems looking like? Yeah, so they have solutions on premises for scheduling bill payments, financials and ledgers, and a customer engagement system which logged all interactions. The only way they could keep track of potential issues with water supply was to look at a volume of calls and emails from customers and specific complaints. They were querying the data on Excel sheets or static reports and detecting broad issues after the fact and weren't able to pinpoint the source of issues occurring in the water service. Right, I think a lot of people have seen this before where it's kind of an on-prem system, legacy, it's limited in terms of getting insights and really optimized for maybe financial reporting or, or billing or those types of operations, but not for analytics, right? Yeah, so we want to shift them to an analytics platform that could help them to more proactively detect service level issues so they could keep the quality of service as high as possible. And so the first thing we did was to introduce new data sources with IoT sensors that we placed on their water transport pipes, providing drinking water across the area. They listened for and measured water flow and pressure. We also placed input and output sensors on distribution boxes to pinpoint water leakages. This data was converted to JSON for stream analytics on the edge. And we used IoT Hub to do streaming ingest of the data into both stream analytics that can be queried from Power BI and routed the data into the data lake storage for trend reports and to create training data sets for analytics. Second, we used the metadata-driven extraction framework with Azure Synapse pipelines to get the data out in a standardized, cost-effective way. We prep and transform the data using Synapse Spark pools and use Azure Data Lake as storage layer for the two data lake zones. One zone for more raw data storage in the bronze layer, and one for more filtered and prepped data in the silver layer. This approach enabled us to merge the information from the SAP systems to match locational telemetry from the sensors with customer and asset management data. Correlate that with logged customer engagement and complaints, and also leverage historical data from these systems. And from here, we're able to directly explore and query the data interactively using Spark pools and Synapse SQL serverless compute. And the results are visualized in Power BI for our internal and external customers and regulators in a governed manner. So this sounds like a really modern approach then to look at uh, basically the water system that you have there. Can you show us how this would look in action? Yeah, so now instead of waiting for after the fact customer reporting for service issues, we can monitor the pressure and flow in real time. So here we are zoomed in on four fragile locations that serve a lot of households in the area. You can see data streaming in from IRT sensors representing flow. Below, you can see where the sensors are located on the map. A healthy reading is around 180 to 200 cubic meters per hour for this pipe type. But we can see one of the flow meters is reporting an abnormal amount of flow around 80 cubic meter per hour. 
This could be a potential risk, so let me click in to get more details. Here we can see the daily usage pattern. You can see that there are peaks in the morning and evening. As we saw, our previous reading shows 80, and it should be close around 200 at this time of day. And now from here, of course, we can investigate this further. So these are really great visualizations on kind of the reporting side, but because we're the mechanics, we want to see what's underneath all of that. Can you show us what powers all of this? Yeah, sure, because there's a lot going behind the scenes here. Let's get into the Synapse workspace, and I'll show you. You can see in the orchestration tab that we're building our data set by mapping and merging asset data from our backend SAP apps for customer and asset data and telemetry data from the devices. This is then transformed into a data model for downstream analytics and reporting using a PySpark script on Spark pools, and we move the data through the lake where you can query the data through SQL serverless that gives us on-demand compute. The great thing here is that we can query CSV files in the, in the lake using T-SQL we all know and love, like the asset master data. Power BI just sees this as a SQL table, but in fact, it's a CSV file on the data lake. And this is really powerful and significant because it really opens up your data lake to legacy apps as well. Yeah, it does. Something we couldn't easily do before. And we can also apply additional SQL security capabilities like row level security on top of flat file formats if you want and need. All right, so this is good, but it's still near real time, but still reactive. Can we flip this and kind of move this into predictive realm and kind of start to predict maybe service level incidents that might happen in the future? Yeah, right. What I just showed you is still reactive based on near real time data though. But we can use the data now to preempt future issues. So let me show you the model we built for service degradation over time that merges historical data with sensor data. This is our PySpark notebook. We are using flow readings to predict failures within 24 hours. We are looking over the data from 50 sensors, asset master data, and data from non-service outages. So we can start building the model now. And since we're doing analytics, there are a lot of components to this. Remember when I queried the master data earlier? We are pulling in that data too. It gives us all the attributes of the pipes, age, and when it was last maintained. Next, here are the failures of sensors over time. This is where we are looking for deviations in the data from sensor data in a three hour period and a 24 hour period. So we took all of those different inputs, all of the sensor readings, outages, material types, and trended over time against our model. And we can see that there is a high potential failure of the water pipe in the area shown on map in the next 24 hours. And really, this was not possible before with this amount of effort. This is really amazing work. And I could also see how this could prevent cases now where people don't have water. And you also have the basis for scaling insights on water consumption and water efficiency. And it's really great to see how big data and analytics really impact the services that we all use every day. So thanks so much for sharing your Azure Synapse evaluation with us today, Hanko. And if you liked hearing from Hanko, please also check back to the rest of our How We Built It series at aka.ms slash Azure Synapse series to learn from other early adopters also kicking the tires with Azure Synapse. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time and goodbye for now.